Aloha, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Staying Young at Heart. My name is Maria Mera. I'm your host, and I'm also a financial advisor with Edward Jones. Um, in this show, we usually talk about how to stay healthy financially, uh, mentally, physically, emotionally. Uh, but sometimes, even if we try and do our best, we still need our health care. So I'm bringing a really good guest today. We're going to have to talk very fast and because uh, there's a lot of information that she can give us. She's a Medicare specialist. Her name is Robin Reisinger, and she works for the Medicare Geek. Robin, thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, our pleasure. So um, let's, let's start from the beginning. What is Medicare? Well, it's For seniors 65 and over, although they're talking about lowering the age right now, um, it's uh, their hospital part A, their medical part B, and then um, that would be giving them the 80-20 split. The government pay 80% and they would pay 20% for their health care. So what does the Medicare specialist do? What do you do? I help people make sure that they have a good strategy. Um, I I don't always meet people who are looking at it uh, from a strategic standpoint and looking at it every year. So who who are you? Who should sign up for Medicare? Well, we have a lot of people right now who were working and they had employer coverage, and now they need help to start their Medicare and then get the additional coverage of the Medicare supplement plans or the Medicare Advantage plans. So really anyone who's getting close to 65 needs to start okay. uh, getting prepared. Um, so is there any, um, any enrollment period that we should be aware of? Yes. Medicare season is uh, going to be October, November, December. So October 15th to December 7th every year. Uh, But in the past few years, Medicare has given us an additional season of January, February, March, just for folks who have Medicare Advantage to make one switch. And what was interesting about that this year is we had bad weather. So FEMA declared a disaster weather system and gave us until July 31st to make those same changes. So is this uh, nationwide or, or no, uh, for Hawaii. A state? Okay. Um, okay. So let's, let's recap a little bit. I'm 65 or I'm turning 65. Uh, do I need to sign up um, this year? Yeah, you, a few months before uh, you would probably want to create an account at ssa.gov, um, you, you know, create a profile, username, and password, and then you would go back in to let them know, when I turn 65, I do want to start Medicare, or I don't, because mm-hmm. if you have coverage, you may not want to pay $148.50 to start Medicare, Part B. Um, so if I don't sign up, it's not mandatory. I can, as, I can decide if I want to sign up or not. As long as you have credible coverage, uh, you have your own coverage that covers uh, medical and uh, prescription drugs. Okay. Um, let's, let's put another scenario. I'm, I turn, I'm already 67 and I for good or didn't care to sign up when I was 65, um, what happened? So that's what we're helping a lot of those people right now because they had delayed it because they were still working and now they've lost their jobs with the pandemic. So we have two forms that we need them to uh, fill out and get their employer to fill out about the coverage that they've had. And we get those back to social security start their um, Part B Medicare, and then at that point, we really need to get them an additional additional coverage, either a Medigap plan or Medicare Advantage. Okay, and, um, and you're the specialist, obviously, and you know very well all these terms, but let's, let's um, break them down a little bit. W- what parts were you, you kept, you, you're saying Medicare par- 
be Medicare Part A, Medigap. Um, can you can you walk us through each part of Medicare? Yeah, Part A in a nutshell is going to the hospital, and if you've worked ten years, then that would be covered. Part B is the part that costs one hundred and forty eight fifty. That's your medical, like going to the doctor. And okay. Part C is uh, D for drug. That's your prescription coverage. And that's not included and you're required to get that when you turn 65 or when you start the Part B. The, uh, the Medigap and the Medicare Advantage, those are the optional uh, add-ons that you do to reduce your exposure to the 20%. With the government paying 80% and you being responsible for 20% of all your health care, you don't want that. So you get these other plans to help cover that part. Okay. Um, so do, can you choose HMO versus PPO or how does that work? Exactly. We're, we're lucky here, yeah, especially in our county, to have the option of both. A lot of people don't have the freedom to choose from such a huge network. We have really great plans in Hawaii. Okay. So what, what are the plans that we have? Well, I represent everybody but Kaiser and HMSA. They have their own agents. So I represent all the rest, United Healthcare and Humana and Ohana and Aloha Care. Uh, I have to get my license in other states when my people from here are moving. So then I look at the plans in the zip code where they're going and I realize how great our plans are out here. We have plans that cost nothing, and they, yeah, and they provide so many benefits. So, is are all the plan Bs um, one hundred and forty-eight dollars that you mentioned is is the same um, for everybody? There is uh, an increased premium. It's means based, so for high earners, they would pay a higher monthly premium for the Part B. Yes. So how how do you if you're retired how do you um uh, how, how do you know if they are high earners is it based on on social security or um or yeah. or their investments social security will know and they'll let you know that they're going to charge you more than the 14850 but that's why it's so good to have an agent. We can help you do an appeal, especially if you've had anything life-changing happen, like moving or uh, retiring, loss of a job. Life-changing events can help us to get that, or it's called IRMA, I-R-M-A-A, uh, to get that lowered. So um, let's say I want to sign up again for Medicare. If I if I reach out to you, so you help me choose my plan, or because I'm lost, am I am I are you charging me a commission or a fee, or how would that work? No, not at all. And I really do recommend that people reach out to someone local. I really don't know how anyone goes online and figures it out. Thinks they figured it out on their own. You you need an agent that'll. Uh, help you if you need to do an appeal or, or, or just anything down the road. Um, but no, there's, there's no, no commission. Um, Medicare tells the insurance companies what to pay us and they pay us. So when you say yes, um, who, who do you work for? I work for the Medicare geek, which is under plan advisors, Hawaii. And um, that was a great friend of mine who got me into Medicare because he knew how much I love to help people. Is, is that why you joined, why you became a Medicare specialist? Absolutely. Uh, we, we have the job of almost like a social worker. Um, it's so rewarding to change people's health and to help them financially at the same time is very mm -hmm. rewarding. So is is there anyone who um who is who sign up and they don't need to go to navigate through all these uh, loops and um or or everybody needs to make the effort of going and signing up? I always recommend that everybody be a, 
proactive a few months before with social security. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes people just fall through the cracks. You don't want that to happen. There can be penalties later if you don't start part B and part D when you're supposed to. So you want to be careful and not have that happen to you. So when you're supposed to is age 65, if you, um, right, correct me if I'm wrong, if you sign up later, then you might have penalties. If you haven't had credible coverage, yes. Okay, so um, what if I already have, if I decided at age 62, I can get my social security um, and I decided to take my benefits already. Do I still need to also sign up for Medicare or that's, um, is that independent? It's the same office, um, but yes, you, I would still, when I'm about to turn 65, in those three months or so before, I would still reach out and let them know because they'll want to know how are you going to pay the $148.50? Are you going to want a bill? Do you want them to take it directly out of social security? Do you want it to be debited from your account? So you just want to touch base. Yeah, so so much also to navigate through that. Uh, it definitely just getting to it early, it helps, right? Yes, absolutely. So where where could we find you if we want that help? I live in town. Um, I volunteer at the uh, Baratania Walgreens, the old Safeway at uh, Baratania mm -hmm. in Pensacola. I, I volunteer there in the mornings. I have a Medicare help table just inside the door. Um, and then I run around and do my appointments after that. So I can come to come to anybody wherever they are. So, um, do you find that women more, or women go to you more or men go to you more? Do, do you have a different in, in sex that they, they like to approach this? My goodness, you might get me in trouble here. Uh, <laughs> I do think that sometimes the men can be a little stubborn and think that they've got it all figured out. Where the women who also ask for directions are the type of people <laughs> who would stop and say, let me just make sure I'm doing everything right. I always yeah. say it's worth the five minute checkup on your Medicare strategy because occasionally I tell somebody, hey, you're doing everything right. But most of the time I end up telling somebody, I think we have a better plan. Yeah. And I, I don't know if I'm, uh, but I, I heard that women are the ones bringing the men, their husbands to the doctor. So that might be, uh, we, I guess we are less afraid to talk about our health and, uh, and to know, to let doctors work on us than, than men do. I, but my mom would always send my dad to the doctor if she wasn't going with him with a list of everything he was supposed to talk to the doctor about. And then he would come home and he wouldn't have done it. <laughs> With the questions, at least of questions. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, we're going to take a short break here and we'll be right back with the Medicare Geek with Robin Reisinger. Thank you very much for joining us. Welcome back to our show, St. Jana Heart. Today, we're talking about Medicare with our specialist, Robin Reisinger, with the Medicare Geek. Um, and we uh, have a, a question from one of our viewers, and he is, um, or she is asking, uh, I hear it's harder 
for disabled people to get Medicare. Is this true? Robin. Um, I, I would say no. Uh, if somebody has um, is disabled and on SSI from the government um, at whatever age, as long as they've been on SSI for 24 months, they're given Medicare. So they don't have to be 65. Um, you know, you, you could have a five-year-old on, on Medicare because they had been on SSI for two years. So uh, that's the only time I work with people younger than 65. What is SSI? That would be the supplemental, uh, uh, it's like social security, but for somebody who's been deemed oh. disabled or blind or deaf. Okay, so um, there is a di difference, right, between healthcare and long-term care. Is Medicare covering long-term care as well? No, unfortunately not. I, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. I, I meet people with really, really expensive Medicare uh, plans, but no long-term care plans. And I think they need to think about the, the long-term care maybe almost more than overpaying every month yeah. for their Medigap plan. Yeah, they're preparing for the unexpected that we all think that it's never going to happen to us, right? But we can, we, we should always be prepared. Yeah. Um, because, yeah. Um, so a, a little more about the difference. What is, what is Medicare and what is Medicaid? Medicaid is any age. It's just low income. So it's health care. Uh, for low income and Medicaid is a state program. Here we call it Quest, MedQuest or Quest Integration. And okay. that's based on income and assets. Um, what ends up happening sometimes is I have people who are on Medicaid and Medicare, and then we have special plans just for them. Okay. Um, so do you, do you, you help with Medicaid as well? Oh yeah, there's maybe like four levels of subsidies or, or help that we can get for people. I don't go anywhere without my chart that tells me the income and asset levels. Um, I think a lot of people have no clue that they probably qualify and are entitled to some help. Yeah, that's that's always. Uh, I mean, I am really to help navigate with all these issues. There is nothing like reaching out to you. Um, so, what about once I sign? I sign this year. Do I need to keep signing every year, or I'm or I'm good? No, I do make sure to touch base with my members every year in the fall. This year, when I am trained on the 2022 plans then I'll call all my members and let them know what's changing. Um, also, if you're on prescriptions, you, you need to look at that every year because the plans do change, the formularies change. Sometimes we're picking a plan just based on the medicine that the person takes and how to save the most money. Uh, but you, you really need to look at it every year. You don't need to sign up every year. And then you should also know you're not married to the plan, you can change it every year. I, I can divorce my plan <laughs> or I can marry. Uh, so if I have plan A and plan B and for five years, this is good. Um, can I go to an ad plan B year five or year six? So you'll always keep the government A and B and then mm -hmm. you can definitely switch the D, the drug plan. Most of the Medicare Advantage plans that we do that have no cost, they actually include the drug coverage as well. So yes, you mm -hmm. should you should always switch to the Medicare Advantage plan that is most advantageous to you. Mm -hmm. What if I have a um, pre-existing condition at age sixty-five? I'm I'm gonna have to go through a physical, or or even if I don't, um, how is the process when I first sign for it? Right now, it's guaranteed issue no underwriting um, okay. and 
our Advantage plans are typically all like that. There would be on the more expensive Medicare supplement plans, the Medigap plans, that would be where you would get into health questions, um, possibly some underwriting if you answered yes to some of the questions. Mm -hmm. um, but still, when that person turns 65 and is just going into Medicare, they do have a, a period of guaranteed issue. So it's even one more reason or, or uh, the main reason other than the penalties to, to sign when you're 65. Yes, absolutely. If you don't have other employer coverage or if you're paying $400 a month out of your paycheck for your employer coverage, I can do so much better than that. You know, save money and get better health care. And the professionals that I'm going to see, are, are they the same or? The doctor? Much the, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, I, um, it's what sorry. Just I, out here, you really wouldn't have any doctor who would only take one type of plan. They kind of have to take them all. Okay. Um, so from your point of view, uh, words of wisdom from someone who is thinking about joining, um, what, they, what should they put in that tech list to be prepared for, for Medicare? So I get a list of my members' meds every year, you know, the, the prescription, the dosage, the amount, the quantities, and, uh, and I run that through Medicare.gov. So a list of your, your medications, that is an impartial website that will just tell you how much your health care is going to cost for the rest of the year. Um, then also knowing about the extras that the plans offer, the vision, the dental, the hearing, the gym memberships, um, acupuncture practice. Um, what, what else do I need to prepare any other paperwork? Like you were saying, um, how much I earn or, um, uh, what other paperwork should I prepare if I want to sign up for Medicare? Just the red, white, and blue card with okay. the uh, Medicare number, not the old ones with the social security number, but the new ones that are numbers and letters. And it'll have a start date for A and a start date for B. And that's really all you need. Okay. Um, any other words of wisdom for, for you, from you to, um, to help people navigate through Medicare? It's worth the investment every year to give your Medicare plan a checkup and just make sure you're on the right plan. The worst case scenario is that you find out you're on the right plan. Okay, well, thank you very much, Robin. I think um, the good thing is that this plays on YouTube, so people can watch this over and over again to, <laughs> if they need to, to repeat all the process. And uh, also the Medicare geek.com. Um, we are showing your email address as well as they, if they want to uh, reach out to you. I really appreciate uh, how down to earth you are and how um, every, every and, and I can understand and I can see how much you love it. So I really appreciate all your help um, helping us through, through this process. No problem. I'm happy to help. And thank you so much for joining uh, our show today. Thank you for having me. It was fun. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone. And we will see you on our next show of Staying Young and Hard. Um, stay healthy. And uh, if you need Medicare, you know who to reach out to. Aloha. <laughs>